What's up guys, welcome to today's video where we're gonna be talking about kayak fishing PFDs. All right, so before we jump into today's video, I gotta thank the folks at the Alabama Mountain Lakes Tourism Association for helping make this video possible. Listen, if you're wanting to plan the ultimate bass fishing and outdoor adventure getaway, head over to northalabama.org. All right guys, so look, I'm a big advocate of wearing your PFD. For years and years and years, I was kind of anti-inflatable. Uh, today we're going to talk about the inflatable versus standard PFD. We're going to talk about how the new Coast Guard ratings affect the type of PFD uh, that you should be wearing. And um, just get into the overall concept of kayak fishing PFDs. So why do I say kayak fishing specific PFD? Well, for the case of the PFD that I've been wearing for the last you know year to 18 months, uh, this is a PFD from the folks at Stolquist. This is the Pisces and it's just a kayak fishing PFD that really worked well for me as a big dude. It had lots of pockets. It had the ability for me to attach a lot of my stuff to it, you know, like my whistle, you know, my river knife, uh, my phone holder, my, my phone, my defender, bleh, my defender tether from the folks at Rogue, and just really set this thing up as a system. You know, one of the things I liked about this PFD is it's got the fold down pockets and they almost act like a little working bridge. They come with a little piece of Velcro in them. And then I decided to kind of style up my PFD a little bit by throwing some of this uh, adhesive Velcro on there, stuck it on there, then I sewed it, you know, threw a little bit more on the back so I can wave the flag for heroes on the water and also personalize my PFD a little bit. So if we can treat it almost like a badge of honor, we're more likely to wear it. I've been really happy with this PFD for the last year. Uh, I think this PFD, the NRS Chinook, um, and then also this dude right here, the Kinetic, from a company called Blue Storm, are probably the top three uh, fishing kayaks on the market. And I, oh, I ordered this specific PFD, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about the, the evolution of fishing kayaks and why fishing PFD should be evolving with them. You know, one of the number one things that you look for in a fishing PFD is this high back, meaning that there's mesh on the lower part and then the upper part is where the, uh, the flotation starts. And I've been really happy with this PFD, but I've had to kind of loosen it up and wear it in a way that I wouldn't normally wear it if I was securing it properly um, because of the fact that kayaks, fishing kayaks are evolving. And because they're evolving, the seats are getting higher. The seat backs are getting higher. And so now I think we're gonna go back in the other direction to where instead of having the high back seat with the mesh lower or the high back foam with the mesh lower, you're gonna to have to do more of what the folks at Blue Storm have done here and to spread the foam out, make it thinner, but make it come all the way down um, almost to the where PFDs used to come. I'm not a real fan of this extra panel on the side, I get it, uh, but I am a, a big fan of ample side adjustment and you will be too if you're a big dude like me. I like the fact that they got the lash point back here and so far I've played with this just like putting it on and trying it on. It's got a lot of cool features. Uh, it's got a lot of, you know, stuff that you want in a fishing PFD. It's got some pockets. I also like the fact that it's got these pockets where you can put your hook packs and stuff in there inside of it. So when you open it, everything doesn't fall out in your boat. Had no problem with the NRS. I've had no problem with the Pisces, but because I'm gonna be working towards ultimately introducing a PFD of my own, I've really been ordering and trying out all the different PFDs on the market. And uh, so far, this is probably the most premium fishing PFD I've ever used and I've ever seen because again, it's got a lot of features integrated into it. We'll do more of a walkthrough of this PFD as an option uh, a, little down the, a little further down the road. Today's video is gonna be more talking about the types of PFDs. And actually, so I'll go back to the Blue Storm real quick. One of the things that you'll start to notice in fishing PFD design and PFD design in general is that they've gone to these new ratings, okay? And in the ratings, this is a level 70, which is similar to or equivalent to the old type three. The type three is the most commonly used recreational PFD out there. It's one like this. This would be a, a type three in the past. This is a type three. But the inflatable kayak PFDs, like this one from Mustang, have actually gone out and got type three certification. If you look at the back of this PFD and you read the uh, placard, it actually is certified as a type three. It also can function if it's inspected for commercial use as a type five. 
So the cool thing about this PFD is it is an adult universal. You can use it pretty much any size. It's lightweight. My son Austin prefers this. And for a long time, like I said, I was not a big fan of the inflatable. Here's what I want to tell you about any fishing PFD that you decide to get or any kayak fishing PFD is learn it. So with this one right here, the one thing you're going to want to make sure you always do is inspect the panel to make sure that it's green and it's good to go. You're going to want to make sure that you understand how to use the internal panels. Uh, he's got his remote for his power pole inside of one panel. And then if you open the other panel up, you get to your CO2 cartridge and your manual inflation tab that you can either have hanging out the bottom or you can tuck it in just inside the PFD. The other thing about these PFDs is they don't give you a lot of space to put gear on. I like to have a whole bunch of stuff kind of attached to my PFD. My son Austin goes a little bit more minimalistic, but the one thing you're gonna want always, always, always uh, is a whistle. So inside of his PFD, we have the whistle there. We have it attached with a piece of paracord and a slip knot so you can adjust the length of it uh, because you don't want long cords um, protruding from your PFD. So if you flip the boat, you don't get entangled in it. And if you do have long cords, like I have for the kill switch uh, on my Torquedo motor, you wanna have that knife readily available and you wanna have one knot, basically. All I gotta do is flip the knot and it comes off. So that is the real simple stuff about an inflatable. If you're gonna wear an inflatable, um, spend a little bit more money. Get a dual purpose inflatable. In other words, this one is a auto inflate and a manual inflate, and it's got the, the tube inside for breathing into the tube to manually uh, back it up by adding air just with your breath, a little tube on the inside. So you can, it'll auto inflate, you can pull this tab here and manually auto inflate it, which is kind of a contradiction, and then you can inflate it with this tube that comes on the inside. So familiarize yourself with your PFD, know where everything is at and how to get to it. Uh, and probably more so than with your other PFDs, if you're using an inflatable, inspect, 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 inspect this thing, because this is the only thing standing between you and potential you know, disaster. Now, I'm gonna finish this video out talking about the idea of wearing a PFD. A lot of people tell me, oh, the law doesn't say I have to wear it, I just have to have it on the kayak. I don't need it, I'm in shape, I'm fit, I'm a great swimmer. The great swimmer one is probably the dumbest one because that doesn't do you any good if you have you know, a heart attack, a really bad cramp, a heat stress, something crazy like that. Um, but I think that all of those are extremes and it's really hard to convince somebody that you know, those things are gonna become a problem. But what can happen is you can just be fishing right and you could be looking this way and a boat passed eight minutes ago and you just happen to not be paying attention you're looking over here and you make a cast you set the hook and then that errant wave hits the side of your boat out of nowhere just throws your balance off you flip out the side of the kayak you've got rod stagers on the side you've got rods laying between your legs you got hooks dangling everywhere and the thing that i worry about the most is that you inadvertently fall off of your kayak because with the stability of modern fishing kayaks, you're more likely to fall off of it than you are to flip it. So you fall off of it, and as you fall off of it, you get your leg, your ankle, your knee entangled in a treble hook that's on the side of your boat, that's laying between your legs, and now your boat, your foot is up on top of your kayak, you're entangled, and you're sitting there dog paddling trying to keep your head and torso up. So wear your PFD, okay? It is one of those things that is real simple and easy to do. And then in these type three PFDs that you see, Look for these logos, right? or these level 70s, which is the new equivalent. You're gonna look for these logos in here. And if you have a kid, make sure that the one that's got the, cir the, auto, the circle arrow that almost looks like the recycling symbol, make sure it has that. What that means is it automatically turns you. So even in a lot of the modern level 70 PFDs, they're not auto turning. It also shows you a little picture. They set this up for dummies. Uh, this is not to be used for tow behinds not to be used for watercraft, I'm sorry, skis, not to be used for skiing, not to be used for tow behind, and not to be used for personal watercraft. There are specific types of PFDs rated for those activities. So when the Coast Guard got away from the type one, type two, type three, and type four, they went to levels, and those levels correspond with both the buoyancy requirement and the activity. I'm not gonna get into all of that because I really don't think it's as important for the purpose of this video. I will link up some, um, resources in a pinned comment below because I know you guys don't go to the description box as much as uh, as you should so I'm going to link up some resources in the pinned description 
Here's what I want to finish this video with. It doesn't matter what brand it is, whether it's this new Blue Storm, an NRS Chinook, a uh, Pisces from Stolquist, a Mustang Inflatable. The most important thing is, is that you find a PFD that works for you. You find a PFD that you're actually going to wear. And that way, when disaster happens or when that complication happens, you're prepared to self-rescue. Uh, because the thing about PFDs are they only are there to preserve life until secondary rescue can get there or until you can affect a rescue um, of yourself. So if you're offshore fishing, be sure to look into an offshore type PFD. PFDs are rated based on a lot of the ratings based on time to rescue, how long that PFD has to preserve your life before secondary uh, rescue and resources uh, make it. Now, the other thing that I'm going to finish with and the last thing that I'm going to finish with is this. I don't care how strong of a swimmer you are. I don't care how good a shape you're in. And I don't care how cautious you are. The other thing you have to remember is sometimes you might be fishing with somebody else that isn't. So if you are my young, fit, strong son who says, I don't have to worry about that, but he's fishing with his old, out of shape man, his out of shape old man, you know what I meant, and I fall out of the kite because I have a heart attack or something, you need a PFD that allows you to sense that thing down, jump in the water, and now that PFD is helping you assist in saving your buddy. Because the last thing you want to do is be out on one of those trips and realize you couldn't help more than you should have been able to because you weren't able to, you know, affect um, assistance. And so anyway, uh, I'm a little bit anal about this because I spent 20 years in the Navy, uh, nine and a half years of it, I was a rescue swimmer. I did search and rescue. Uh, part of the other half, I was still attached to units where we did search and rescue and I saw a lot of senseless deaths. Just in the last four months alone, we've had six kayak anglers in this country that have died as a result of being in a fishing kayak and not wearing a PFD. So guys, listen, <clears throat> I don't want to get into a big debate. This isn't a fishing PFD review. This is more of a get a kayak fishing specific PFD because that's going to make you more likely to wear it. And the best PFD that you can buy, the best PFD that you can own is the one that you're going to wear. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and do me a favor and encourage others to also wear their PFD. Share this video comment in the comment section below hashtag wear it and i'm gonna pick a winner to give away a free pfd all right bro what did you say to me about the pfd right after i stopped this one that i've been using is not auto inflate. <laughs> all right so i don't use them and he corrected me as soon as we stopped filming so this is dual manual you fall, inflate if you fall in you're either using oxygen or pulling a cord <laughs> it's carbon dioxide actually you same, breathe same oxygen <laughs> anyway all right guys i stand corrected Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover with Kayak Bass Fishing. If you're looking to get in on the exciting sport of kayak fishing yourself, check out kayakbassfishing.com. Yeah! Boom! Oh yes! What a freaking toad. So whether you want to find out more about competitive kayak fishing and kayak fishing tournaments, or just looking to learn more to make yourself a better angler, head over to kayakbassfishing.com and join today.